My name is Rick Kaisman, and I'm going to be uh, following on from Peter Feiler's uh, uh, plug. I'm going to be talking about employing AADL to do some security analysis in an Internet of Things context. So, first of all, uh, security modeling. Um, we believe, and, and many other organizations believe, that modeling security in the architecture is an opportunity because critical decisions are made in the architecture that can enhance or negatively affect security. Uh, and until now, the, the uh, primary focus of security has been on coding and testing. And we feel that there's been a, uh, a lack of emphasis on an architectural approach, an architectural approach to specifying and analyzing security. And this is, this is an opportunity. And employing AADL gives us the opportunity to formally model and verify uh, a design. So you've already seen this, this slide. Uh, John Goodenough presented it. And you've already heard about AADL. The point about AADL that's really important for our modeling efforts is that it's strongly typed, as Peter said. And this allows us to specify system-wide rules and to uh, check the validity of those rules. So AADL contains a set of built-in properties that allow you to capture characteristics of components. So uh, again, uh, following on the example that, that Peter was talking about, you might have a component that performs encryption. And this component might have one property specified for latency and another for the type of encryption. And uh, you can uh, uh, do analyses based on the values of these properties. So you've seen this picture before. AADL encompasses a number of different kinds of analyses. And of course, we want to enhance that upper right hand corner. Uh, we want to enhance the capability of, of specifying and modeling security. So to do this, we we needed a case study, something to motivate this investigation. And uh, our goal was to do something in the Internet of Things. And this harkens back to uh, Kevin Fall's introduction this morning, where he talked about things being networked together that perhaps were not originally designed to be networked together. And this is what you often see in Internet of Things examples. So uh, to, to specify it even more closely, we decided that we would look at the problem of automotive electronics. Because uh, in automobiles, they are now networked. They are now, um, uh, they contain uh, many processors, uh, internal networks, as well as network connections to the external world. And this provided uh, a rich uh, example uh, for, for us to understand and explore the capabilities of security modeling. So to begin with, we needed to reason about what kinds of threats would this automotive electronics example face. And to explore this, we employed the stride model, which is a model that originated in Microsoft a little more than a decade ago. The word stride is an acronym made up of the uh, initial letters of the six kinds of threats that it models, spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privilege. And the idea of the stride model is this gives you a structured way of walking through different kinds of threats in a disciplined fashion to try and understand their consequences. By the time we began employing stride to reason about the threats that the architecture faced, we had already done quite a bit of architectural specification in AADL. And this allowed us to very quickly reason about the types of threats and their implications on the architecture. Would this particular threat affect a data store? Would it affect data in transit? Would it affect a, a, a running process? So what we did is we, over a course of uh, several sessions, we instantiated each of these threats, because uh, let's say spoofing or information disclosure or denial of service is a category. And we had to create an instance of this category in the context of our automotive electronics problem. So for each one, we specified how the threat might be realized and the implications on automotive electronics. And then uh, this consideration led us to determine a number of risks, risks to the system, risks to the architecture, which in turn led us to 
ask a number of questions. And these questions would drive design. So these questions would lead us to make design decisions about system-wide properties or system-wide capabilities, such as, uh, again, what, what Peter was saying, you might need an authentication and authorization service within the architecture to mitigate a, uh, a particular threat. And so this let us uh, reason about the property that was violated and how we could mitigate that property. So we were uh, building up this um, example, this automotive electronics example. And as you can see from uh, this, this picture, which is just a, a piece of the example that we constructed, there were sensors, there were actuators, there were people, uh, there were components that would allow you to connect to the external world, like a digital radio. Sensors were things like an engine status sensor or a wheel motion sensor. Uh, actuators were things like a throttle actuator. So if you look at the cruise control system, the cruise control system has to interact with all of that. It interacts with the human operator who, who sets buttons to uh, turn it on or off or increase the speed or decrease the speed. It has to um, uh, read impulses from the wheels to, uh, uh, to know how fast the car is going. It may have to uh, change the throttle position to maintain a set point. And with all of this, you have to consider the possibility of threats and where threats might come from. And the digital radio seemed like an ideal entry point. It's, it's an access point, a threat boundary, essentially, to the external world. So we did an in-depth analysis of uh, attack types, each of the six attack types, based on the stride model. So let's focus in on information disclosure. If you want to guard against information disclosure, you need to authorize and authenticate components. You need to say who can access what data with what rights. Who can read it? Who can write it? Who can they share it with? So we made a number of architectural design decisions to uh, reify this. Um, if component A wants to communicate some, some data to component B, then they have to be of the same group. And so to support this, we defined a property. We extended AADL with a property called access group, a list of groups. Uh, also, you have to ensure that the, the uh, components have the proper access rights for the data being communicated. So following Unix style, access rights, we defined another property, access mode, which had the following possible values, read, write, execute, or combinations of those. And then we created a compound rule that checks the access group and the access mode properties of every component to ensure that they're, that they're consistent for the, the, uh, the data that they're trying to share. OK, so to reason about security properties, popping up a level now, in, in, at an architectural level, we need to specify the properties, and we need to say which architectural elements those properties pertain to. Then we make claims, and we analyze claims over those properties. So we might have a claim that every component is authorized and authenticated, or that uh, data being transferred uh, satisfies the, uh, uh, the, the claim that they're in the same or compatible access group, and they have compatible access rights. And to do this, we use the Resolute Model Checker, which again, Peter mentioned as one of the add-ons to AADL. So here's a little piece of the model that we specified in AADL. And you can see that there's sensors, wheel rotation sensor, brake sensor, actuators, the throttle actuator, and uh, control software like cruise control and the infotainment system, the, the bit of automotive electronics that a driver actually interacts with. So to make this example even more concrete, a vehicle speed sensor has to be able to communicate its speed to other components in the system. So it might write to a global data area from which multiple other parts of the uh, automotive electronics can read. So this data would be annotated with an access mode of R and a list of subsystems that were allowed to read that data, such as the cruise control. Now, if you had a malicious application, this malicious application might try and attack the car by writing a value to the vehicle speed, which would make the car think it was going slower than it actually was. The cruise control system would then try and increase the speed, and you'd end up with a, uh, uncontrolled acceleration. 
So how do we deal with something like that? Well, we need to specify that only certain applications can write speed data, only certain applications can read the speed data. And so we check the access group, and we check the, the writes. So we specify this in AADL by creating a property. Uh, we call this property set security trust, which consists of access mode, an enumeration of read, write, and execute, access group, an enumeration of the set of systems that are allowed to access this particular piece of data. And then an architect could use that new data type to um, annotate, um, sorry, could use that property to annotate data types in the system. So the uh, vehicle speed data, for example, would be annotated with a security trust property of access mode equals R and access group equals CC for cruise control. And the throttle position has an access mode of right and again, the same access group of cruise control. Then once we specified all these claims across the architecture, we can run the resolute model checker, which walks the model hierarchy and determines whether the claims are satisfied by the specification. So again, following along, along on this uh, information disclosure example, we want to ensure that data being read by the cruise control has the proper access mode properties specified. And if, for example, there was some data that uh, was going to be executed, we want to make sure that it was properly specified as executable. So here's a little tiny snapshot of, a, of such a check uh, from Resolute. And you can see here that the read and write privilege checks failed, the execution check passed. And that's because in this instance, we improperly specified the uh, vehicle speed access mode with write, and we improperly specify the throttle position access mode with R. And you might say, duh, that's obviously wrong. But the problem is that in a complex system with thousands of properties or tens of thousands of properties over thousands of components, it's easy to mess up, especially as that system evolves. And security is a kind of binary thing. If there's any exploitable weakness, you have to assume that a hacker will find it and exploit it. So uh, the advantage of this kind of model checking is that it is comprehensive and you can prove these claims over the entire model. Okay, I'm almost out of time. So I have to um, mention some limitations to this model. First of all, you may have a weakness external to the model. So if someone, for example, um, via a phishing attack, obtains privileges without properly being authenticated, then they can circumvent the safeguards in a model such as this. Also, you might have correctly specified a solution, a remediation to a security threat, but the specification was itself uh, not strong enough. And I don't have time to go into this example here, but I'll be hanging around the poster tonight if anyone wants to discuss it. Okay, so what we found as part of our study is that architectural security modeling has some important benefits. It allows an architect to reason about a system and design a system in terms of properties that um, apply across the entire system, system-wide, rather than specifying security properties component by component or line of code by line of code. And it provides a framework for checking these properties and especially checking that they continue to hold as the system is maintained as it evolves. But it has limitations. Like anything else in software engineering, it's garbage in, garbage out. Um, the research also resulted in many collaborations. So we had uh, one collaboration that resulted in uh, some uh, malware analysis research. Uh, we had an uh, architecture analysis method developed and uh, a tool that looks at um, uh, modularity flaws and relates those to security bugs. 